Hey, what's up everybody? Pete with Auto Pair Tips. In this video, I'm working on a 2010 Ford Fusion. The customer says he was driving along and the check engine light came on and a brake light came on. He said the car seemed to stop fine and it seemed to drive fine, but he wants me to check it out just to make sure there's no issues. So let's get into it. All right. Let's see what lights we got on here. I don't see a check engine light. I see a tire monitor light. I see an ABS light. I see a traction control light. And I see a red brake light. But well, definitely the red brake light is the major concern. An amber light does not fail state inspection, but a red brake light will. So I think our next step is to go ahead and throw a computer on it and let's see what kind of codes we got. On a 2010 Fusion, the connector for the OBD2 is located right behind here. You just pop the panel down and it is located right here. It lights up, so we know we got power going to that. The scanner. It is a Ford. Automatic ID. Ford Fusion. And we're going to do a, let's start with a system scan. Let's go through everything and see what it comes up with. No engine codes, no transmission codes. The power steering control module has an issue. And for the brakes, it's going to say a faulty control module. First thing I'm going to do is check the fuse, make sure it's good, and that the module has good power. I know in the past six months, I've probably done about five or six of these modules on Fords. One of them was, the last one was an Escape. I think I may have a video and I have to go back and look. I like never found a control module for that, so I hope we don't have that problem here. But first thing we're going to do is check power and grounds and go from there. I went into Intelligence Diagnostics. I'm going to go down to Smart Data and let's take a look at that and see what it says. So right off the bat, we see we don't have any sensor supply voltage. All right, let's exit this. Let me go ahead and get a schematic on this and let's see exactly where the module is and let's check power and grounds at the module. All right, on this one here, we got this a plain old Fusion SE model. Yes, I do want to load that. Load and repair information. Please be patient. Uh, let's try this one right here. OEM testing, real fixes, causes. I'll tell you what, let's go to... Hold on a second. ABS, it was... Let's go to ABS control module. ABS. The ABS control module. ABS control module. Loading the car. Automatic transmission. Use this vehicle. So let's go to a component location first. ABS control module. So the control module on 2.5 is the right front. The 3.0 is the right front and the 3.5 is the right front. Uh, let, let me see which one I got real quick. Let me verify the engine size. So we definitely have the 2.5. Blow it up. If this is the front of the car, that's your right headlight. The control module is located in the engine compartment right there. So let's do this. Let's do this. Let's go to wiring diagrams real quick. Just check some of these fuses out. This is your control module right here. Master power. I don't know about master power, what in the shit? Damn mouse is stinking right now. So in the fuse box, we have fuse number eight is a 40 amp, fuse number 10 is a 30 amp. So the first power one we're gonna check is this one right here. Fuse number eight, 40 amp, let's go check it out. So this is the fuse layout like this. And number eight is right there. It's kind of hard to see like this. Let me pull it out and we'll take a look.
All right, let's take a look and see what we got. Oh, bastard. I'm gonna ohm it out real quick. Stick it on ohms. Check the machine, we're looking good. Nothing wrong with this fuse. We know the number eight fuse is good. Let's check the number 10. That's the next one in line. And if you look at it, that goes all the way down to the valve power. So let's go ahead and check that one out. Let's see what we got on that. So it looks like number 10 is gonna be the third one over right here. And that fuse actually looks good too, but we're gonna take it out and oom it just to play it safe. All right, that fuse is good too. You know, I was kind of hoping it would have been just a fuse, but I don't know if we're gonna get that lucky or not. All right, looking at the next fuse, this box is located on the left side of the dash. So fuse number 42 is a 10 amp fuse. It's hot in the run or start position, and that feeds the module also. Let's go ahead and check that fuse out next, and let's see what we got on that. Well, let's kind of start this over. I got interrupted like three freaking times. The reason why I skipped over this one here, it goes into the brake pedal switch. We don't have an issue there. It's just the control module is not powering up. So the next one I went to was this one here because that one goes directly into the module. I'm probably not even gonna be concerned with this one because it goes into the instrument cluster and there's no real issues there. So what we're gonna check, we're gonna check this one right here. And if this one is correct, then we're gonna go start probing the back of the module for powers and grounds and make sure we have them there also. All right, number 42 is way up yonder here. Let's see here, we got power on this side. And I have, let's see how many volts we got. I got 14.4, because I have a charger on the car, so I'm gonna go dead. And on the back side, I have 14.4. After checking that fuse there, I got plenty of power going to that module. Now it's time to go to the module, check our power on ground there, and see what we come up with. It was in my app. So here's your control module right here, and this is the connector to it. What I'm gonna try to do is just move as few things as possible to get that connector out of there. Sometimes less is better, right? At least that's what I'm hoping for anyway. I guess it'd help if I put the damn thing in the right direction. I'm hoping to get this thing out of the way without taking any of the water lines off. Dude, it has been one of them mornings. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I've had about a million interruptions. Okay. Just work with me a little bit. That's all I'm asking. That's all I'm asking. I think I might get lucky. Can I get so lucky? So let's see here. <clears throat> It looks like this is gonna push straight down. It's got one of those clips that goes straight down. Hoping it goes down far enough. I'll put you guys on this side. Maybe you get a little better view. Maybe, maybe not, right? Uh, now nah, they got it. Y'all, y'all need help? So yesterday I took off early. My little girl turned 14 and she wanted to learn, take surfing lessons. So we took her down to the beach and got her some surfing lessons for like a three day thing. And it has been the funniest sight to watch that girl learn how to surf. 
They got some of these clips. All right, moving right along. Um, what I'm doing is I'm just trying to get things out of the way so I can get to that clip a little bit easier. Like I said before, I don't want to have to take all the stuff apart. I'm just trying to just trying to get to it where I can take some readings on it. And it looks like if I get a wire tie, I'll be able to tie this to that right there. And I should be able to work with that. I tell you what, it just seems like yesterday. It just seems like yesterday she was born. Can't believe 14 years flew by that fast. And that's my baby. My oldest one's like 34, 35. I'm not really sure how old she is, to be honest with you. She's, she's up there. Tell them my age now. People laugh at me. They always say, yeah, um, you you had is this often the same wife? <laughs> yes, yeah, it's the same woman. <laughs> Even the fourteen year old, yeah, yeah. Had a friend of mine. His wife was a news announcer, and she, uh, they were the same age we were. And he ragged me. Oh my God, he ragged me. And then uh, a year later, his wife got pregnant. <laughs> Said, uh huh. She kept mouth shut. <laughs> so once you get to it, there's two clips one on each side of the connector just if you squeeze the tab in and you pull this lever up it literally comes back off and you just pull it out like that now what i'll do at this point is i'll go get i'm gonna pull a pin connector up and we'll come back and we'll check it at the pins here so we want, what we want to do is we want to go down here and we want to find the volts and grounds right now we're going to work with 12 volts Let's see here, we got, well here's number 10, that's a fuse circuit. 20 is a control, not used, not used. Here's a, this one here is a pin number eight, is a 20, all right, let's start with here. Pin number one, immediately, it's gonna be a 10 gauge wire and it's fused. And looking at here, pin number one is gonna be right there. What's gonna make this a little bit easier, if you hold it like this, like I was showing you, this is your clip side, but you look in the bottom side, they're actually numbered. So we'll be able to use these numbers on here. And you can't go wrong. There's no way. Come on. But this is number one right here and looking at number one we have 12 volts so let's see what our next one is looking over here pen number eight is going to have 12 volts should have 12 volts also let's check that one out right here so holding it like this we got one two three four five six seven eight checking this one here and there's 12 volts on that one there so let's go to the next one i got a feeling we're going to have a bad module that's my gut so looking at this one here the next one's going to be pin number 32 and that is also a fuse circuit all right looking at number 32 that is this pin right here and we have 12 volts the last thing we're going to check is the ground. I think it has one ground on it. I'm going to take the test light. We'll hook it to the positive side of the battery. And if I touch this and it lights up green showing I have a good ground. I think the ground circuit was number 16. Yep, number 16. Pin 16 is you're going to be your ground circuit. That's probably going to be one of the M ones. And it is this end side right here. And if you look right here, we have a good ground. So after running all the tests, it's obvious we have all the grounds we need. We have all the power we need going to the module. It's just not sending anything to the sensors. And like I was showing you earlier, when I had the scanner hooked up, that one test there, there was zero volts at the very top where there should have been 12 volts feeding those other sensors. There was nothing there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to price that one from the dealer. I've had real bad luck with aftermarket ones. And hopefully the dealer can still do this one here. It's not discontinued, but that's the direction that we're heading. So once I get my prices together, I'll call the customer. I'll see what he wants to do, and we'll go from there. Catch you in a bit. So here's a kicker. Check this out. I just got off the phone with a dealer. 
and they're telling me the electrical part on that module that I need for that EBS is not gonna happen. They don't know when they're gonna get one, if they're ever gonna get one. And I remember something like this before in the last car I worked on a few months back, having issues with it. So I tried aftermarket. They're not even showing it. I went online. You can find some used ones on eBay, but I'm not, I'm not going that route. So I talked to the customer and told him, I said, you know, what do you want to do? You got a, basically a car that there's nothing wrong with. Interior is good, runs good, shifts good, drives good, body's in good shape. But you got to junk it because you can't buy an ABS module. That's jacked up. But anyway, we took it to his house and he's just gonna park it there and we're just gonna keep researching it and see if he can come up with something. But that's gotta be the most BS thing I've ever heard. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the car. You can't, that you can't produce a module for that kind of car. I, I just, something just doesn't jive with that. But anyway, it's out of our control. So for right now, we're not doing anything to this car. It's back at his house and that's it. I appreciate you watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Catch you later.